today is a drippy post rainy day. <laughs> it rained yesterday so bad. We were under flash flood watches. It just poured and poured all morning. And when I went to bed last night, it was thundering and raining and raining. <laughs> it just never stopped all day yesterday. Um, as I said, we were under flash flood warnings. And when my husband and I had to get out and run a few errands this morning, I was just shocked at the creeks and the ditches and how bad it was. And what was weird was a lot the water didn't seem to be going anywhere. <laughs> it was just sitting there. So that's not good. Usually uh, it'll start draining and going downhill, water levels out. So it'll start going downhill. But today it just kind of seemed to be sitting there. So that's not good. I'm hoping though that it'll all drain and be okay. This is Monday and they're calling for more strong storms Thursday. I don't know how much rain. I just know the storms are supposed to be strong and they're calling for bad weather. So um, I'm hoping all this water drains out of here before that comes. That being said, yesterday was a great day for me. Just peaceful. I knew it was going to rain all day. It was raining before I even woke up. It was raining all day. So I just kind of had one of those days where you stay in slippers. You don't worry about your makeup or your hair. And I did some cooking, I did some cleaning, I caught up on clothes. But what made me so happy was I had the time yesterday to just finally, because of the rain, because of not being able to do anything else, I had the time to just get my laptop out, the laptop that I have my spreadsheet on with all of my seeds. And I had time to just go through everything uh, I'm not finished. I'm not saying I finished a whole lot of things, but I did at least get that process going. I kind of narrowed down pole beans. Which pole beans do I want to try to plant? And I'm so excited to do pole beans this year. I've never been so excited to do pole beans. But I trimmed a few of my azaleas the other day. And some of the branches, because they hadn't been trimmed, I guess, in years, some of the branches were long and huge and they were thick and healthy and I just decided to take those and make pole bean poles out of them and I was so happy let me show you real quick what they look like they came out good I also have a little second pile that's laying to the right of these pole bean poles and that pile is like smaller little shoots that were coming out of the ground around the azaleas just small little shoots coming up out of the ground but they were very bendable they weren't stiff like a, a, a branch. They were very bendable and they were long. So I cut a bunch of those and I kept them because I'm thinking I might can weave them in and out of the tops of the poles, the other branches to kind of make it stand up and hold like a, a pole bean, a uh, little teepee should or whatever. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do teepees or if I'm gonna do some type of a long um, strip, but one way or the other, these azalea branches are going to be pole bean poles and I love them. Let me show them to you. Now they're just laying here amongst all my boards for my shelves that I'm building. But look at all these poles. They're very, very long. They're thick at the bottom. This is pretty much the bottoms of them down here. I went ahead and left some of the branching on some of them. Some of them that kind of flare out. And um, I just, there's, there's possibilities. There's possibilities of putting some of these different shapes together and kind of strengthen each other. I'm very excited, I'm very excited. But over here are the little shoots that were sticking up out of the ground. And they're just, um, I don't know how to explain it, but they're a little more pliable. I can wiggle these and they move. So I'm thinking I can weave them in and out of these big ones over here and um, just kind of make pole bean poles out of all of them. I did a book review a while back about Will Bonsall's book about radical gardening. And he's a very well-known gardener, seed saver, seed preserver up in Maine. And I'll link that video below too, if you have time and you want to look at that video. But he kind of is what is inspiring me to do this. On his property, he has alder trees, which apparently are very strong trees and they have um, branches that a lot of them are crooked and different things. So he made like an alder orchard, I guess you would say, like a long thing that he lets a lot of his bushes and berries and all grow up on. 
and it's it's strong and it'll hold the weight of all the berries and everything so that's what's kind of inspiring me to at least try this why not try it over there under my shed i have some tea posts uh i have different things over there and i may end up incorporating some of the tea posts into my pole bean structures if it'll make them stronger and make them where they won't blow over in a straight line wind or something i'll use a tea post or two in there but that's just going to kind of be in there somewhere when you first see it when you look at it i kind of just want them to be an organic looking little little fence that my pole beans are going up on and i'm so excited about it and you want to know something else i've got peas coming up and i've got spinach coming up it rained so hard yesterday that i literally was worried this soil was gonna be washed away. But I walked out this morning and look, look, <laughs> look at there. That's Thomas Laxton English peas coming up. And down here, the Burpiana peas have decided to come up too. Look at there. I just saw another one here. Look at there. Now there's a little gap between them. They're not every one of them coming up yet. Peas will do that. Peas will take two weeks to kind of all pop up before they'll decide they all want to pop up. But that's okay. So I'm hoping here shortly, I'll have a line of peas down this ramp. And I walked over here today and they're little, they're little. But in my sugar kettle, look at here. Look at here, spinach. They're everywhere. They're just popping up everywhere. So it took about eight days for my peas and my spinach to start popping up. And I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> I was getting a little bit nervous. But that's just the way it is. And that's normal. <laughs> it's normal. But I always get kind of nervous when I plant things. I was just worried. Maybe I kind of rushed and planted those peas a little too quick. Maybe they weren't going to like the soil and the way I did it. I don't know. And of course, they're just babies right now. They're not fully seedlings, so things could change. But I think it's gonna be okay. I really do think it's gonna be okay. And inside, I've got artichokes popping up in the soil. Let me show you that really quick. My Imperial Star artichokes are coming up. Look at them. They started coming up yesterday, just all of a sudden, a whole bunch of them. Now, my asparagus, no, <laughs> they're not coming up at all yet. I really don't know how asparagus works. I'm really not sure. These American flag leeks, they are coming up. They are actually the first ones that started coming up, but look at them. They're doing great. Right next door to them, though, my red burgundy onions, nothing. I'm not sure about onions either. So I'm new to all this. All four of these varieties are new to me. So we'll have to see how that goes. But one thing that happened yesterday in this rain event was I watched a video yesterday evening. I had saved it to my watch later list, kind of forgot about it. And then here it was a rainy day yesterday. And I said, let me just see what's on that watch later list on YouTube. And I saw that video. It was an hour and a half long or so, maybe even more than that. And it was the Back to Eden garden video that probably everybody else has seen besides me because I think the video was about four years old. It wasn't a new video. And the man named Paul in the video that invented, I guess, this whole system, his proposal in the whole Back to Eden garden system is that this is how we are supposed to be growing things back to biblical times the way God intended. So all that's very interesting. It's just a very interesting thing. And I'm sure I'm late to the party on back to Eden gardening. A lot of people have probably tried it, decided they don't like it, they do like it. Uh, I know Patera follows it. I know other people have said it doesn't work for them. I'm not here to debate any of that. I take away two things from watching the video yesterday. This is just my brain working. One thing is, I love learning. I love learning things. And that's what I enjoyed about the show yesterday, the, the video that I watched. It was a documentary on the back to Eden garden is, I learned a lot and I learned why he feels the way he does about Back to Eden, which basically if you boil it all down, 
It's just that you leave the soil alone as it is. You cover it with things to protect it and that it regenerates itself. That's me simplifying it as quickly as I can. His uh, preference is to cover it with wood chips, wood chips that have been composted, regular wood chips, just wood chips in general is something that he uses loads and loads and loads of, covers ground with it, and that after a while, those wood chips not only break down, but the soil underneath the wood chips breaks down and becomes very, very healthy. He uses no fertilizers or anything like that. He simply grows in the soil that's healthy because it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And the more you cover your soil, you're kind of mimicking a forest floor which if you go dig down in the dirt in a forest floor, it's usually not hard to dig in. It's very, very healthy and full of organic matter and nutrients. So he's telling us in this documentary to get back to that. What I, the whole concept as a whole is probably <laughs> correct. I can't really always just grasp. I don't want to wait until I grasp a whole concept. What I do is that I, watch things like that and I learn from them. And then I try to take aspects of what I learned in that short amount of time and at least say, what can I use from what I'm learning in my life right now? So that's the first thing that I took from that video yesterday was some specific points that I think I can take from his Back to Eden methods and use in my life right now. And I'll go over a couple of those in just a second. The second thing that I took away from just watching the video yesterday was that I'm thankful for days. I went to bed last night and I said, I hope the rain didn't flood anybody. We, we do get flooding in Louisiana a lot. I'm up on a hill, I'm not in danger of flooding, but we do get it. So I went to bed last night saying, I hope no one flooded, but thank you Lord for this day. <laughs> thank you for this day. I was very, very thankful for a day that made me stop and just do nothing kind of. I, I, I was busy all day, but it was taking care of business type work. And But it forced me to do that because when it is sun shining or when I'm able to and it's not raining, even if it's not sun shining, even if it's not warm, I've been coming outside to do a lot of things. And we need to do a lot of things. You need to get those things done. But I also needed some time to plan. And the planning part was what I was struggling with because my, my mind was just saying, you need to be outside getting things ready. But if you don't actually stop and think a little bit about, well, what's going in all these beds you're getting ready? Well, okay, well, you're wanting now, <laughs> apparently, I have 20 tomato varieties I'm wanting to grow. I didn't really realize I was going to have that many, but that's what came out of the video the other day. So I have 20 tomato varieties I want to grow. Well, where are they going? <laughs> where are they going to go, Lainey? You don't really have gardens yet. I don't really want gardens. I want planting spots. So it's like, okay, well, where are they going to be? Where are these planting spots? So yesterday I was able to just have time to think. I was able to just not be outside, not having my hands busy with outdoor work, but to be inside and have my mind busy and plan. And my planning mind, my mind that was needing to plan, and my learning mind kind of collided in this video. I was watching that documentary and my learning side of me was going crazy <laughs> and my planning side of me was saying there's some answers to what you're worrying about over here and that's why I enjoyed the documentary so much. I will try to find the documentary and link it at the bottom. I can't remember the name of it right now but it's basically the big Back to Eden documentary that kind of launched a lot of um, the whole concept I guess. I think. Uh, I don't know the whole history of Back to Eden, and I'm not going to take the time to worry about it. I just, it's an hour and something, 40 maybe minutes long documentary that fully, fully delves into it. And it's a beautiful, beautiful documentary. And I would recommend you watch it just to 
to cherry pick things like I did. Let me give you some for instances of what I learned and what I'm gonna do. He mentioned in the video that he doesn't have a problem with his potatoes coming up out of the ground and then getting scorched by the sun and turning green, which you don't want them to be having green shoulders on them. He said he doesn't have a problem with that because of the fact that he does, he covers his potatoes with dirt and soil like we all would do, but he also has wood chips then that he then puts on top of that bed. So when the potatoes are growing, instead of growing and popping out of the dirt and being exposed to the sun, his potatoes, as they grow, just kind of grow and they, they lift the wood chips. They just kind of lift the wood chips from underneath, but the wood chips stay on top of the potatoes. So, duh, I mean, it's really and truly that simple. It's that simple. And I really wouldn't have thought of that. I have been sitting here thinking, where am I gonna plant my potatoes? I bought 10 pounds of potatoes the other day at a feed and seed store. I bought some Yukon Gold. So I was gonna take my plow and just kind of plow up some furrows and plant the potatoes in those and then cover them with dirt and then come back when I need to and hill them up. Well, now I'm like, I may not even have to hill them up. If I plant the potatoes, I cover them with the soil and then I put a layer, not really, really deep, but a couple of inches of wood chips on top of the whole bed. I'm going to see if his theory works for me. If when those potatoes kind of grow and all, that, that the wood chips just kind of go up. And he just says he doesn't worry about his potatoes a lot. He just doesn't worry about them. And when their plants are ready and when he thinks they're ready to harvest, he just digs down in there and tests and then he takes them out. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. Why not? I have absolutely nothing to lose to try that. And also on the peas that I just showed you. Now they're just, they're that big coming up out of the ground right now. They're little. But when they become seedlings and when I'm pretty sure that they've all germinated, the ones that are going to come up and they get to be three or four inches tall, I think I'm going to bring wood chips in there and cover that whole bed, you know, going around the peas, let the peas come up out from the wood chips and gently do that. And that way I'm protecting that soil underneath. And also his big point, and this is what catches me when he does talk about this. And this is the learning that I tried to take away from that video yesterday is that the wood chips protect the soil from needing watering all the time because the soil doesn't dry out since it's not as exposed to the elements. I could also, I have leaves <laughs> coming out from everywhere in my yard. I could also kind of do this with leaves if I wanted to. And the leaves would, would sit on there and mulch as well. I could do a, a mixture or I could do one or the other, but I could do something is what I'm saying. So I think what I'm gonna do on this property is try my best to appreciate this black dirt I have up here, which I did not have at my old property. This dirt is so much more fertile than it was at my other house. But to keep it that way, I need to put things on it. When my peas are coming up, rather than just say, oh, I'll bring in more and more and more organic soil. If I, if I like growing there, I'm just gonna keep putting organic soil on it all the time. Why not just keep the organic soil you have fertile? and moist and ready to grow things with. Why not? So that's what I'm going to do. And I've showed you many times my wood chip pile. And I wasn't sure, I kept saying on my videos, y'all let me know what I need to do with all these wood chips. Because I've got a lot of wood chips. I've got a lot. I used the end of this pile to put around my crepe myrtles and to put along the front of my house because of my rain coming off my roof. I've used them for that, but now I know what I can do with the rest of them. Now I know I can use them to protect all this valuable soil that I have on this property. I can use them to have it break down right on top of my soil and in the coming years just have even better soil. 
better and better soil year after year. That's what I learned from that video. What I'm just gonna try to do is take some things that I learned from that video. And on this new property that I have, which as you can see, I do have leaves and I do have woods. I do have a little bit different climate than I did at Camp Joy Farms. And I'm gonna try to make the best of it. I just kinda wanna take everything that this property offers me the open spaces, the trees, the dirt, the leaves, the azalea bush branches. What do I have? What gifts has this property given me? What do I have? I want to appreciate those gifts and I want to use them. And I also, I just want to say thank you, Lord for that rainy day, for a rainy day of planning and thinking and dreaming. Thank you.